Okay. I'm ready. All right, I'd like to call the meeting to order. For um, Could we please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And a moment of silence, please. Thank you. The listing of matters on the agenda are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed, and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. This meeting is being videotaped for cable. We are going to start with our approval from, of our minutes from our meeting on August 22nd. Moved. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? I will approve them only based on what I read. Okay. Excellent. As I was not present. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. So voted. Sorry. Um, our next, we're going to do some personnel or introduction of our new members <coughs> of our staff. So, um, Mrs. Spencer, would you like to start? Actually, well, I'm sorry. Before you start. <laughs> I'd like to welcome, thank you for coming, our that. student representative. <laughs> this is Sean Leonard. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Hey, Sean. All right, Mrs. Spencer, thank you. Uh, I would like to welcome all of our new uh, staff here. It's really nice to see you, and we love having you introduce yourselves to us. Uh, first, at Spring Street School, we have the pleasure of working with Stephanie LaPointe this year. She's an instructional assistant in Mrs. Conroy's class. Stephanie. Hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm from Abington. I graduated Bridgewater State in May with a degree in Early Childhood Ed. I'm hoping to get my master's in special ed and eventually move up to have my own inclusion classroom, but for now I love Spring Street School and I'm really excited for the rest of the school year. Excellent. And since I'm up here, we're going to uh, hop up to the Howard School for a moment. Um, I would like to introduce Brian Mansfield, who's actually not a new face to all of us. Uh, Brian was with us last year, midway through the year, but he's in a different role now as an instructional assistant in fifth grade. Brian. Hi, I'm Brian Mansfield, and as um, Peggy said, I am a fifth grade IA, um, and I enjoy working at the Howard School um, for the last half of the year and into this year. Um, last May, I graduated with my uh, business degree from Curry College, and I am now switching over to uh, get my uh, continue my education in education, either in special ed or elementary ed. And I am starting uh, I'm starting to and working on my MTELs, and uh, that's where I am leading into my education for uh, my future. Thank you, Mrs. Spencer. I'm ready to present our new teachers at Roselle. So we were very fortunate to hire four new staff members at the Roselle McDonald School, and they've been a great addition to the staff. Uh, first, we're going to introduce Amy Crawford. She's been teaching second grade. Hi, I'm Amy. I'm actually from West Bridgewater, grew up here, went to all the schools in town, so really excited to be back. Um, I went to Salve Regina University and received my bachelor's degree in sociology and then transitioned into education and received my elementary licensure, excuse me, licensure at Bridgewater State and I was able to student teach in West Bridgewater also and I'm just really happy to be back to, to the community that has done so many things for me. We have Amanda Enos, who is our new elementary uh, special ed teacher, who's been working primarily in second grade. Hi, I'm Amanda. Um, I have 10 years experience coming from Brockton. I'm super excited to be here in West Bridgewater and really excited to be with second graders again. Um, 
I'm also a yoga teacher and I'm hoping to bring some yoga to West Bridgewater and the students. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that will be coming out in the retreat program soon. Mm -hmm. We have Emily Messina who's teaching first grade. Hi, I'm Emily. Um, I just graduated last December with, from Bridgewater State with my elementary education degree and an English major as well. Um, I've done some long-term subbing in Pembroke and Stoughton. I'm excited to be here in West Bridgewater. I've always driven by and loved it, mm -hmm. so I'm excited to be here. Um, that's kind of it. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we have Joseph Russell, who's teaching third grade. How you doing? I'm Joe Russell. I'm from Stone, Massachusetts. I graduated Westfield uh, four years with uh, elementary education and a math concentration. Um, I love to go fishing. I love to go on my boat. Uh, I live right down on Plymouth on Whitehorse Beach, and I'm so, so excited to be in West Bridgewater. <laughs> Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Vaudwell to introduce our middle senior high school. So excited to hire six new teachers, uh, a great group. Uh, they're doing a wonderful job to start. The first one is Kristen Bathford, a high school special ed teacher. Hi, I'm Kristen. Um, I'm from Rockland, Massachusetts. I graduated Fitchburg State in 2013 and have been working here at the Middle Senior High School for the past three years, actually officially today, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> as an instructional assistant in the high school. And recently this spring obtained my teaching license and applied and I'm excited and ecstatic to be in a new role in the same district and I love it. So thank you. Next is Megan Carmody, our part-time French teacher and RTI tutor. Um, my name is Megan Carmody. I'm from Norwell, Massachusetts. Uh, I studied at Stonehill College where I graduated with elementary education and foreign languages. And now I have the pleasure of teaching middle school French part-time and an RTI, um, as an RTI tutor on my off days. Um, I've had a wonderful experience here so far and I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. Next is Kathy Edlam, our high school French teacher. Hi, I'm Kathy Edlam. I have come from Quail and Cassidy High School most recently, where I spent 13 years as the French teacher there. I also spent some time teaching in both the Milton and Hingham public school systems way back. And then in between then I worked 10 years for Kimberly Clark Corporation in Nina, Wisconsin using my French in a business setting. So this is quite a change for me coming from a very old school. I've never had the pleasure of teaching in such a beautiful building. I'm very excited about the use of technology, which is one of the things that I try to incorporate into my classes. And uh, one of the things that's most impressed me so far is the respect of the, that the students have shown. My former colleagues asked me the other day, you know, how do you like it? How are the kids? How are the kids? That's their first question. And I, Honestly, they're extremely respectful, which was a very pleasant surprise for me, public school. But um, <laughs> they've, they've been great, and uh, so far it's been a wonderful experience. So thank you. Next is Jennifer Thomas, our teacher here in the Learning Commons. Hi, my name is Jen Thomas. <clears throat> I work in this excuse me, beautiful space. Um, I am the media and educational technology specialist or the library media specialist. I guess I have a lot of titles. <laughs> um, I am in my 10th year as a school library media specialist. Um, I was at Bishop Stang for about six years in the role of um, director of library and in, um, technology integration there. And then I was at Dighton Rehoboth for a short time. And most recently I'm coming from our charter school in Providence, Paul Cuffey School. Um, and I just, um, I love this school so much. Um, I, was, I had lunch duty today and within 20 minutes witnessed four random acts of kindness among the students. So it's just such a pleasure to be here. Um, I have the pleasure of teaching all seventh and eighth graders in 
my exploratory courses, which are information literacy for seventh graders and digital citizenship for eighth graders. And in just two weeks, I feel like they're my kids. I love mm -hmm. them. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited to work with teachers to coach them on the use of technology in their classrooms. I think Kathy and I are going to be working together a lot this year. Um, and I'm just excited to see what potential and the space has so much potential where we can take it from where it is now to where we can take it to the end of the year and beyond. Thank you. And next is Tara Myers, a high school instructional assistant. Hi, my name's Tara. I graduated from North Adams State College many, many years ago. Um, I reside in Bridgewater. I was a business major, as I said, and um, took some time off to raise my four kids and went back to working with um, special needs preschoolers and moved over to here, which I'm um, very excited to work with high school kids and I'm very happy I made the move. And Kelsey Francesella can't be here tonight. She's actually coaching field hockey and they're not back from their game, but she's our uh, math tutor in the middle school, former graduate. Congratulations to all of you. Great. I want to thank you and all for being here tonight. And again, another welcome to West Bridgewater. And we will take a short recess so that you may um, go home and get refreshed for your day tomorrow. <laughs> so take a short recess. Thank you, guys. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Congratulations. It's probably just with this. That's great. Wait, that's right. It's like early intervention. That's what Julie does. It's rice. What's the idea of rice? No. Day. No. Day, day, day. Night. I shouldn't have noticed. Yes. I'm very excited. I thought it was. And she's got two weeks. That's great. Yeah, I'm not impressed with your child or stuff. Patty, what's the, what's the acronym RTI stand for? Response to intervention. Response to intervention. I should know that. <laughs> I'd like to call. Should. <laughs> I'd like to call the meeting back to order. Don't ask me. <laughs> okay, uh, Dr. Oakley, the superintendent's update. Opening week of school. Okay, um, I'd actually like to just have the principals. Uh, talk a little bit about how the opening of school went from my perspective I went around to all the schools on the first day and it was business as usual and it was um, exciting to see everyone come back I got into a lot of the elementary uh, classrooms with teachers in there and said hi to a lot of the kids and um, everyone seemed excited and even a week later with uh, Spring Street didn't skip a beat and everyone was excited to come back so um, you know, it was a, a tight summer at the Spring Street School trying to get everything done. Uh, it worked out to our advantage that kindergarten kids come a week later, but the teachers um, really were troopers and came in and got their, their stuff ready. So, I mean, I think it was uh, relatively smooth, but if each principal would just talk a little bit about the opening day of school. Uh, well, at Spring Street, uh, to repeat what Dr. Oakley just said, it was uh, a week before school was actually starting. It, it, we did get a little bit nervous looking at the building, but um, everyone worked really hard. The teachers are unbelievable in how quickly they were able to get their rooms ready for the children and uh, have everything in place so that when those little babies got off the bus mm -hmm. and got out of their cars, <laughs> you would think the rooms had been ready for months. And um, that first day of school with the preschool and kindergarten is, is just the, the best when you see them and the tears from the parents <laughs> are, uh, are something, but everyone was ready, lots of smiles by the end of the day and uh, it was a, a great day and it's been a great start. Um, should I jump up to Howard? Uh, Howard School, very similar. The first day we meet everybody up on the hill. It was a beautiful day outside. Um, everyone was out there. Most everybody was on time, and uh, we had the help of the West Bridgewater Police Department as we do each year, and it's a really nice community day, and, and I look forward to that, seeing uh, different people who haven't seen each other for a while, the adults, and then the, the policemen on their bicycles and um, different vehicles to, to help us out. So it was a great day. The teachers' energy was high. The kids loved the day. Um, the end of the day, you know, we, we got them all home, <laughs> and um, it's been a great start. We had a lot of last-minute 
students entering our schools this year, so we got them placed. They're just falling into place now like everybody else. It's been a good, good opening. And at Roselle, I have to repeat what Peggy said. For me, year two went much easier. <laughs> yeah, we slept the night before school started. Got, again, the, the teachers are amazing. All those little faces that come in every day. It was a smooth transition, especially for the first graders. The only tears really were from the moms <laughs> who had to leave their children at the door. But it's been a smooth transition. You walk in now, you think they've been there for months. Um, so it's been a great start to the year. And it's a great start for my year two. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It was an awesome start to middle senior high school. We had parking, which was a big bonus. We mm -hmm. that last That's year. true. Yeah. <laughs> That's they were walking a half mile to school. Um, but there was a lot of energy. Uh, all the staff were wearing their Wildcat Pride t-shirts. Uh, they were just excited to see the kids. The kids were excited to be back in school. I think year two was kind of that. It was not overwhelming walking into the new building. Mm -hmm. And uh, they hit the ground running. Uh, teachers, students, uh, support staff, everyone. It was a really a great, great start to the year. And the energy still seems to be high. So very excited. And the best part of the start of the school year, as you know, we <laughs> figured we'd do an encore presentation of our- Absolutely. Um, Come on. <laughs> you know, regarding back to school, we have a cookout at the end of the year when they, when they leave. The I still get the, I get the same glasses. For the summer. <laughs> but I really want to find a way to welcome them back. How can we welcome them back so that they're excited about school? Let's see everyone there. to see Hamilton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I'm going to the buses and take them to a red sauce. <laughs> Sally says no. Will we get signed?
this one was crazy. <laughs> you can put it together. I have people at church asking about this. <laughs> yeah, people in Wayne McGrath. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I was. I was like, ah, ah. Next year. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to pull the union card. <laughs> <laughs> Just your part, oh, so thanks. I can, so I can just watch it all the time. <laughs> How many views do you have on your video? Lots. 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 Um, I will say it is, it is definitely worth Whoa. watching it several times. So Five thousand seven hundred forty-five wow. on this, but Ten we have. Down. 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 <laughs> that was Jim. I didn't do anything. Oh no, 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 no. I, I didn't do anything. <laughs> No, no, oh. sir. <laughs> yeah. But our, um, yeah. Yeah. There you go. the Facebook page, we have like 20,000 views just really? from it through the Facebook page. Oh, that's page. Wow. awesome. Well that's deserved. Funny. Yeah. And of course, really. Channel 5. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can't forget that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, got, got the yeah. shout out from, you know, Ed Harding. Just like yeah. Well, it's excellent. Not only your talent in dancing and singing <laughs> and the video, but the lyrics and all of it coming together, and it just shows how much you guys work together, too, and how willing you are to work together no matter what the task is. <laughs> well, we can't stop the feeling. Yeah. It, it, you can't. And you know what? Every time I hear the, the song in the car, it really mm -hmm. makes me smile. So thank you. <laughs> it definitely is. We had fun doing it. Yeah, yeah. it was fun. I mean, the whole world knows that some of us can't party. dance, but yeah. it was fun. <laughs> really shows our students, too, to step into <clears throat> your comfort zone and how it, it can be rewarding and enjoyable. Mm. Oh, yeah. So thank you. It was stepping out of the comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of you. Some of you didn't. It was fine. Anyway. <laughs> we know. Peggy can dance. <laughs> Sarah and Linda Wally. Yeah. yeah. They can dance. Yeah. Yes. They got moves. They've got They moves. do. Yeah. Naturally. <laughs> okay, now right. can we move oh, now on? Into trans <laughs> we, how does that yeah. transition into transportation? <laughs> Sarah, you want to come up and do the transportation? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm, I'm, I can do it. Um, <clears throat> transportation update. 5,000 times better than last year. Um, the Having the center of town done, and having the roots already have gone through a full year, um, the same roots helped us out a lot. Um, we got the roots to post a little too late, and that's why we had some glitches, because we didn't have a week or so to kind of look at the roots, and we had to post them right away. So then we had parents call and saying, why is this not on, why is that on? But we had to post it, because we got it Thursday, and school was starting Tuesday. Um, if we had gotten them a little earlier, then we probably wouldn't have had those. But you know, it was just people just panicked because they didn't see their stop or they weren't sure what they were doing. But we got everyone that needed to got on the buses by the time Tuesday or Wednesday rolled around anyway, so that was fine. Um, we did have to change the start time. We had to move it up by 10 minutes or move it earlier, excuse me, by 10 minutes in the morning, and that has made a difference. We started that 
last week and it has made a difference in the morning. So I think we have the morning down and it gets easier and easier because don't forget, we kind of get it down and then the kindergarten goes on mm -hmm. the buses and it takes a and it first week of kindergarten, parents are still trying to get the kids on the bus, taking their pictures and doing those things. And actually, when you watch the kindergartens get on the bus, the steps are so high. <laughs> it does take them a lot longer to get up the steps. So um, I think the morning was set. The afternoon, we're still releasing a little bit early from the high school to get the run started so that we can get to the McDonald School in time. Um, but we are working with the highway department to open up that service entrance that's along the soccer field behind the Howard School. And tomorrow, um, tentatively, Lucini's will be training the buses on that. They haven't actually paved it yet, but the highway department did the work they needed to do to get it ready for that. And they also took the gate out so that the bus can come out easier. So now, at the Howard School, the buses will come in off of 106, go down, pick up the kids um, on one side of the cafeteria, while the parents and the, the parent pickups and the walkers are on the front of the school. I think we could, we'll definitely pick up five minutes. Well, I'm pretty sure we'll pick up 10. Because once those buses come in, someone from the other side of the um, hall are going to be putting those kids on the bus. They can go right out. So I think that's going to make a big, big difference. And so that should make it that we can change the high school and get them back to dismissing at 2 o'clock instead of 10 minutes of. And it will even everything out. Not to mention the time saver, but just the safety aspect of it. Yeah. It's just yeah. incredible. Yeah. I'm sure that it makes Mrs. Spencer and your staff and everybody else who's you know involved, which is probably everybody in the dismissal, very, very happy. We're looking forward to it. I'm sure. Because, uh, as many times as I've told students they can't walk out mm -hmm. beyond the curb, they do. Mm -hmm. And um, it's. Everyone has been safe, but uh, there have been close calls out there, mm -hmm. even with me, mm -hmm. um, standing in front of cars. And so <laughs> mm -hmm. it will be because it's hard to always know who has the priority. Of course, it's the children and their safety, but is it the bus or is it the five cars waiting there? Or you know, it's mm -hmm. a balancing act. So this way, everyone can go at the same time. That's awesome. Right. I think it's it's you know when I talk to the police and <clears throat> the highway department. The bus company, Peggy. I mean, everyone. Everyone's like, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. We definitely have to do that. I mean, um, Lucini's is very excited about it because it's just going to pick everything up for them. So, we did drive through there with a bus, um, and <clears throat> it's fine. It's just they the corners on some of it. We asked highway to widen, and then they're going to put asphalt from um, 106 up to where there's like kind of just the compacted mm -hmm. stuff and they're going to do that. They're going to widen the corners like <coughs> I said and they took out the gate for us. So it should be because it was kind of tight for a bus coming out with cars parked across from them. So um, I'm hoping that after we after they train we can do it and at least you know it will probably take again a couple days to really get it down but it's going to help a lot. Mm -hmm. And again, yeah, I agree with you with the safety because the yeah. first day I was over there and I saw a pit. I mean, you had to be like like more than a traffic cop because you were like, okay, walkers, come across here and you guys stay there and then this car come up. Oh, wait a minute, there's a bot. I mean, it was, it's, it doesn't, you can't do it at one. And mm -hmm. it's, you need reflective vests too. Mm -hmm. You really and do. Signs. Yeah. Yeah. Stop signs. I don't like these yeah. stop signs, but sometimes it's. You need two of them. It doesn't protect you from an oncoming car. No. <laughs> Well, sometimes the buses, too, are getting stuck behind a line of traffic cars right, of right. cars coming in, and they're trying to squeeze by, and then there's kids coming across, yeah. or there's parents that have little ones that right. aren't in school yet, and they're all at the playground, and right. it's, yeah. it's, it's going to be helpful. Is there signage on that road to say that it's not for other vehicles? We're going to, Julie's ordering signage, so there won't be right away, but there will be. And that is the case, it's only for buses? To only for buses. Um, as a, I know that in deliveries, trucks, okay. and I know that um, for soccer games, I think some people come in and they park there, but they don't go through the whole way. They go in and out, and so. but I don't want it to end up being a regular pass, so we do need to tell people that it's buses. Right. No. Okay. So we'll have the police enforce that, too. Mm -hmm. And, well, it's just going to take people to get used to it. Mm -hmm. Right. And then just one last thing. I just wanted everyone to know that Dr. Oakley, again, and all the many 
roles and responsibilities that she has that I witnessed her with probably seven to ten maybe seventh graders oh, yeah, last week. Um, who had missed the bus over at the over here and she was walking with them from the high school all the way over to Howard to catch up with their bus just as she's walking by me with these kids following her I'm saying what don't you do <laughs> It's so like make way you. for ducklings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Make way for seventh graders. So <laughs> thank you though. They uh, the kids were thrilled obviously. So thanks. Well I don't know if they were thrilled, but <laughs> they, they got their bus. They didn't miss their bus. <laughs> they they didn't miss their bus. <laughs> All right, transportation. Always easy, right? Yeah. So <laughs> the district Ask Sarah, it's September. <laughs> <laughs> the audit. Yeah. I talked a little bit about at our last meeting that we were selected for an audit by the um, Department of Elementary and Secondary <coughs> Education. It's the their Department of um, District School Accountability, and they pick so many schools in the state. I'm not sure how many. I thought it was 20, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, a year, and we after the last meeting, I did receive an email. They asked us to do a. Um, a self-study or a, a self-evaluation on each of these standards. They had um, indicators that you have to put not so well, somewhat well, well, or very well that we're implementing certain indicators under each of these standards. That has to be in by October 14th. Once they get that, then that group will make a decision on which three standards will be assessed on for the rest of the year. So then, then our study would begin. And they'll tell us specifically, OK, what type of evidence we have to gather um, for those specific indicators. And they'll also tell us what four-day period in the spring that they'll be visiting West Bridgewater to, to do this. So I had mentioned before, but these are the six standards. And they lumped them in two groups. There is leadership and governance human resources and professional development and financial and asset management, those three go together. Or they could pick curriculum and instruction, assessment and student support, those three go together. So we'll know that um, after the 14th. We kind of split up the tasks among everyone and then this morning went over each of the standards and the indicators and kind of did a self-study and decided what type of evidence. They only want three pieces of evidence for each of the indicator, each of the standards for now. So I'm going to try to get it in as soon as possible because I think the sooner we get it in, maybe they'll turn it back around. I'd rather know what three they're going to um, audit us on and also we'll be able to maybe actually choose dates, like if they have a few, if they don't already have a lot of schools already signed up. And I think that would be helpful. <laughs> I know most of them I've seen have been around the March um, time frame that a lot of people had it in the past. So um, we'll send that in and see what happens. But honestly, actually doing the self-assessment in many areas, I think we're in really good shape after we sat down. I mean, there were some things that were somewhat well, but we know that and a lot of them are really easy fixes but there's so many specifics that they want you to do that I don't think you can be very well on everything you always have room for for growth so um, but it gave us a lot of ideas of what we're going to need um, to gather for evidence stuff so it actually wasn't that bad an exercise because of that reason so it did help us mm. so I'm sure so you'll hear more about it you're going to be interviewed by this committee when they come in um, not really sure how they're going to do it, but they will want to talk because there's one whole standard under leadership and governance, which is school committee. So they're going to want to interview you. They'll be interviewing teachers, be interviewing kids. They're going to go into classrooms, um, administrators. They'll probably, because of the financial one, want to interview you know people on town side of government. So they they do everything. So we'll set all that stuff up for them. Any okay. questions? Okay, my goals for this year. I only have one. No. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> We've decided. Keep it us. says four. Keep How can I, was say going. I was joking. Yeah, I was joking. we know you're joking. <laughs> um, so I have four goals. Some of them are continuation because yes. they were two-year goals. 
even though you have to do goals every year as a superintendent and you have to be evaluated every year um, we are able to do two-year goals um, with teachers we can do two year we can just do two year evaluations but with administrators you have to do one but we can have two year goals so I have two professional practice goals and two student learning goals and you can see um, the first two um, well the first one was one that I had last year but I've we're changing it a, we're increasing it or improving it I guess um, so Last year, I said that to increase the visibility in classrooms and feedback to building administrators through learning walks with the individual principals. So now what I want to do is expand that and implement um, learning rounds with groups. So for example, if um, I decide to do a structured walkthrough with uh, Mr. Bodwell in the middle senior high school, book a time that the other administrators come, the other principals, and walk through with that because then you can actually have a good conversation about what do you see for student engagement? What are some things that you would su suggest? So even though they're elementary and secondary, um, teaching strategies are still universal, they're still good strategies. So to have that conversation afterwards would, will be really helpful to have another set of eyes that Mark can ask questions to. Same thing, we could go to the McDonald School and walk through and say, okay, what do you think about this? And look at the walkthrough template and said, well, because sometimes when we're seeing the same people all the time and we're in that building, you get that, um, you, you start getting a little tunnel vision. So to have other people come in and look at it with you and actually have the discussion, I think it will um, help us with our professional practice and help the principals also. So we're gonna try, I'll still keep up the individual learning walks, but I definitely, <coughs> once a month would like to try this learning rounds thing and see how that works out with all of us. Um, the second one, um, probably my favorite goal, <laughs> kidding, um, is last year I looked at the strategic planning process and um, came up with some ideas that really should be put into place, which is um, looking at actually putting the strap plan and the school improvement plans, the process, the tools, and the format much more, uh, in a much more cohesive um, structure. And so this year, I'll be looking at the actual format of the school improvement plan and how we can make it so that um, strategic planning is here and it, it doesn't skip a beat. It was. It felt before that it was two separate things starting to go in separate directions. Didn't start that way. And so we want to make sure that we stay together. So um, it would be similar to the strap plan will have the overarching goals and objectives, but the school improvement councils will be the groups that actually implement those things. So we need to be much more closely tied to that, which makes sense because then um, if you have school improvement goals and they come under the district goals, then you have the resources for it, you're paying attention to it more instead of having, well, we want to do this for the district, but I'm going to do this for the school. It doesn't make sense. So we just need to make it a little more cohesive. So I'll actually do different points. We actually talked about it at a cabinet meeting this morning about adding certain things to the format um, of the improvement plans. Um, goal three is the second year um, about the integration of technology. This actually could be forever because it's going to continually change and grow. And there's still so much, you know, we have all the technology, we got the technology in, but it's more about integrating the technology and making it, instead of just like I say, enhanced learning, we want it to transform teaching and learning. So last year, we had the secondary um, folks, the seven through 12, get trained in the um, CMR model of in um, instructional technology integration and work with Wendy Haskell, who is a technology consultant that we get through North River Collaborative. This year we're doing phase two, which is the elementary teachers are getting that. So again, 
it's nice that we have all the hardware, but we need to keep working with teachers to make sure that it's a smooth transition and that it, it, it's a tool that becomes part of their planning and it's not an add-on. It's not like, oh, we'll use technology for this, but the technology is actually part of the lesson. And I believe since we really started talking about CMR, which was about three years ago, um, ourselves as a um, team, I don't know, have you, I think you've seen an increase in how teachers use technology and that it's more seamless than it used to be. Um, and I think what helps with that too is when, <clears throat> you know, when you just had a cart that you had to share with five different teachers, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to go get the cart and, and get the Chromebooks out today or get the laptops or iPads out today. But, oh, someone else signed up for it, so it changes your whole lesson. Or I don't really feel like going, you don't use it as much, so then you just don't use it. Whereas now that all the kids here have Chromebooks and the elementary, every classroom has their own set, there's really no excuse that it's not convenient. Mm -hmm. So once you take that away, then it's, you know, start working with it slowly. And honestly, I think the teachers have really, really come along with it. Mm -hmm. And we have more to do, but that's why, you, you can't forget how important the professional development for the technology piece is. And the last goal um, stems off of what I talked about the first day of school with the teachers, and that is facilitating a district-wide study group on the growth mindset. The administrators read the book this summer and we had some conversations about it and talked about ways that we could integrate the growth mindset language into faculty meetings and conversations that we have with teachers throughout the year. And then I threw it out to the staff and said, why don't we do a district-wide study group on the growth mindset where it will be, you know, kind of a year-long thing that set around the book, but it won't just be reading the book. Reading the book, watching some video clips, articles, other resources, and culminating with a plan of how they can integrate elements of a growth mindset into class classroom instruction. For example, um, really using things like the power of yet and, and stuff like that. And I think if we can do that and get enough people at each school, that can be really transformative mm -hmm. in a whole district. And I know as of last week, I mean, the first day we put it out, we had 30 teachers sign up to be in this study group. I don't know if other people have added since then. But to have 30 people sign up in a district this size across all grade levels, and we'll put it out again, I'm sure we'll get a few more than that. Um, that will make a big difference. So I'm um, <coughs> excited about that. Yeah, I know. The more people, the more books that Sarah has to buy. Oh. <laughs> you say nice things. Oh. <laughs> Was saying, oh no, how much is that going to cost me? No, but um, have the money for that. No. so I yeah. think that will yeah. be that growth yeah. mindset yeah. will yeah. really be transformative. And I was really excited to find out how many people signed up just the first day, so I'm sure we'll get more. So, Excellent. those are my goals. Mm -hmm. I don't know Sounds if you have good. any questions or comments. Or Very ambitious goals, as always. Mr. Vavall to talk about senior privileges. Yeah. <clears throat> so, do we have a copy of it on the passage? Sure, a copy of it. Okay. It's passed out to First of all, our, our seniors are off to a great start. Um, we've had a couple of meetings with them. They've got lots of energy. They're excited. It's a really good group of kids. Uh, they bring a lot to the plate in terms of being the leaders of the school. We had a meeting first day. That's why I said, you are our leaders. You need to go out there and really show and demonstrate that to the younger kids. And I told them that day, I said, you know, I will always go to bat for you in terms of privileges. Um, you know, we set a precedent a few years ago, giving them earlier, I think a long time ago, it used to be at the end of the first quarter. Um, but really, we use privileges for a couple of reasons. One is to help motivate them. Um, students can't go on privileges if they're failing anything, if they're late to school that day, if they have any behavioral issues. So we would like to give them the privilege of going out, you know, during power block and to the first lunch, knowing that they are now responsible uh, for their behavior and their actions along the way. And the kids will really work hard. They'll work hard to be in school on time. Uh, they'll work keep their grades up. So 
it's our hope that we can give them something. And if we need to, we'll take it away. Um, if they have progress reports, if they're failing something, we'll call those students in, we'll talk to them. Uh, report cards, if they're failing, then they'll lose the privileges. If they're late, uh, they won't get them that day. If they're late more than three times a term, they'll lose them uh, for the term. Um, so again, they're, they're young adults. We want to give them the responsibility to go out there and, and make the right decisions that they make most of the time. But it also gives them some preparedness, I think, for a life beyond WB. So the form hasn't really changed. I think we may have added the information about the cell phone just in case uh, you know they, they don't show back up and they don't sign back in. We give a way to get in touch with them. And that's the other thing. If they show up late for privileges, uh, coming back, they'll lose them for the next day. Or you know, for the second time, or maybe lose them for two weeks. Okay. I'm asking for your permission to, to grant them as we see fit. I'd like to make a motion to accept uh, Mr. Bodwell's um, senior privilege permission um, as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments? Sean, are you for this? Yes. <laughs> just, wanted to, just wanted to check before we voted. Yeah. <laughs> all, right. all right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So, awesome. Thank so you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to the seniors and congratulations on a good start. All right, approval of policies. So this is me, the internet policy, which I actually have made the changes, but I haven't presented them to you guys. So I will present them to you next week and then um, so that they can be reviewed and voted on for our October meeting. Okay, so put it back on for that? Yes. Okay. Yep, we're gonna, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can we talk about that actually when you're doing it? Sure. Because there's something I want to add. Oh, okay. That I got new and that's why I didn't present right. it. Right. <laughs> I'm meeting with Mr. Collins on this on Thursday, so we can chat before you put it all together. Okay. okay. I'll, sh I'll send you what I have so far. Thank so you. then. Okay. Excellent. Um, so assignment of new policies. So policy 3600, weapons, drug, and alcohol abuse. I'll take it. Excellent, Mr. Holden. Thank you. I um, will take it. Policy 8303, student discipline. I'll take that one. Excellent. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Sullivan. Thank you. You've got a handle on the committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Getting mm -hmm. things done. Yeah. Just cracking the, the whip. Mm -hmm. Sue. Sue? Yes. yes. All right. So. Who we'll compare notes? Okay. Just don't do it the way I do. Um, warrants. We have one warrant to be approved, warrant number 12A, dated September 15, 2016, for $143,237.48. We have a motion to approve the warrant. Moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. So vote it. Oops. Uh, we now have time for a public forum. Members of the audience wishing to address the committee may do so at this time. Audience members are reminded that personnel issues or issues that would violate student confidentiality cannot be addressed during the public forum. <coughs> See, no takers. <laughs> um, we will move on to important events coming up. So at the Middle Senior High School on September 15th, grades 7 through 12, curriculum night starting at 5 p.m. and going through the night. 5 to 6.30 is the high school, 6.45 to 8.15 is the middle school. So the short introduction uh, by myself, leading off, and then they follow their child's schedule. So if they can bring a schedule with them, it would be very helpful. So high school's first. Okay. High school's first. High school's first. Excellent. High school at 5 o'clock. Good planning. Bring your kid's schedule. Print it out if you can't read it electronically. On 5 your to iPhone. 6.30, Mark? Yes. The and then 6.30 to? 6.45 to 8.15. Thanks. Right. September 24th, the rededication of the Robert M. Dwyer Field at 1 p.m. Hmm. Is it a rededication or dedication? Does well, dedication. Dedication, because that field's never been dedicated. Oh, that's but you could say rededication because it's from Robert M. Dwyer. Personal. But I, I don't get it. Semantics. But hmm. it will be great. It will, so the dedication will be at 1. The game actually starts at 1.30. And as I've said, Many times at our school building committee meeting, come hell or high water, we are playing that game on the 24th. <laughs> um, so we may, we will not have bleachers 
or the press box. We knew that. Um, but we're still going to play the game. Um, we walked around the field last Friday with AP Whitaker. Um, and we, you know, they're, they're pushing it. But we really want to get started on this field. So even though there will still be land, mostly landscaping issues that still have to be done on the perimeter, we want to get started being able to play both football and field hockey for now and then soccer probably during tournament time. Um, but we, we need to get it open. So if we, if we waited till everything got done with the landscaping, we wouldn't be playing this season at all, and mm -hmm. I really want to. The kids have been traveling too much and being shipped to practices. We need to. So, after, so from the 24th on, everything will be home on that. So, That's great. So we're going to do it. So I will put out something on Facebook and on our web page for people to bring um, Lawn chairs to sit on because we don't have bleachers, but that's okay. I think they'll be happy that the run. game is going to take Absolutely. place. The so. spirit will still be there, and that's what's mm -hmm. that's what's important. Excellent. On September 28th, the half day for the pre pre kindergarten through grade 12 teacher in service at the Howard School on September 28th, the half day same, same thing. Mm -hmm. On September 29th, the Howard School Curriculum Night starting at 6 o'clock. At the Roselle McDonald School on September 22nd, the Curriculum Night starting at 6 o'clock. Our half day on the 28th. And on October 6th, the Spring Street School Curriculum Night at 6 o'clock. Our next meeting is Monday, October 17th at 6.30 p.m. right here in the Middle Senior High School Learning Commons. And we are actually going to um, adjourn to go into executive session and we are not going to reconvene into open session. So we do need to take a vote to go into executive session. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to end the school committee meeting and open back not to return an executive session. Mm -hmm. Second. So thank you. And Jim? Roll call vote. Roll, Roll call, call vote, vote, sorry. Aye. 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 Excellent. All right. So have a good night. Good night. Yeah.